Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial series on GUIs. So this is part 10. In the last video, we took a look at the data grid uh, control element. Uh, so we did a data grid service inspector. So this is how it looked like from our last video. So we had this window here. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, so here we have it. Uh, so it's a very simple, you just put in a uh, couple letters um, and you could apply the filter to the services and you can click on the services and see their status. Uh, so it's just a very, very simple service inspector. If you don't have anything there, it just uh, shows every single service. If you just put A and apply the a filter, it shows you all the services that start with the letter A. So we had a question uh, from one of our viewers uh, to how to apply the filter automatically as you're typing. So if I was typing PR, it would automatically update this data grid um, automatically without having to click on the button. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And that request came from Robin Powell. So we're going to be taking a look at that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just open up our PowerShell script from that last video. So I already have it open here in Visual Studio Code. So the first time that I made this video, it was using PowerShell 5.1. So we're just going to be using actually PowerShell 7 in this one. Uh, but all the code works. Uh, you can literally take your code in from the last video right into this one. and Everything should work perfectly good. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to first edit this uh, XAML file to remove the button because we're going to be editing the data grid just on text entry we don't really need this button for apply filter so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually just going to open up that xaml file now if you guys have uh followed these video series and i have my xaml file right here now let me just zoom out here uh, so i have my xaml file right here and if we just double click on it it just opens up in internet explorer um, or a default web browser of your choice. Um, so that's not really useful. We want to be able to edit it in Visual Studio. So how I like to do that is I like to just open up Visual Studio. And for now, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2019. Um, if you're using Visual Studio 2022, uh, it should be pretty much identical or really any version of Visual Studio recently. Uh, this should be quite similar. So what you could just do is you could just go ahead and create a new project. If you didn't have any projects, if you do have old projects, uh, you could just open one of those, uh, quite frankly. Uh, but let's just go ahead and let's create a WPF application. And we're going to be creating a C-sharp WPF application. But you can use the Visual Basic WPF applications. So we're just going to click on Next. We're going to leave everything as the default here and just keep clicking on next and then create. So once we have our project up here, all right, so here is our project. Now, as we can see, our main Windows XAML file will have nothing in it. So what we wanna do, since we just wanna edit our XAML file that we already have, what I like to do in this case is I just like to right click on the XAML file that comes in that default project. I just delete that XAML file there. And then we're going to right click on the project title. So for me, it's just WPF app six. And then there's a drop down for add and then existing item. And then in this existing item, you're going to come where your XAML file is and make sure that your filter is set to all files or XAML files. And then here you're going to see the XAML file that you have for your data grid service inspector. Double click on that and then it'll open up. And then if you double click on that XAML file, everything will open up here and we will have our window that we can actually edit. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this button. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and save that XAML file over our old one. And now if we close out of Visual Studio, because we won't need Visual Studio anymore. Now, if I do try to run this, uh, we will get some, uh, we didn't get any errors uh, because um, 
variable just doesn't exist, so it can't do an add click, but there's no errors generated. Uh, but here it is, we have our filter, but now we can't filter on anything. So let's go ahead and let's go to the bottom here where our functions are. So we have our function for the data grid when we have a selection changed, and then we have our uh, function from when we had a button, which really all we wanna do is change that button function to when the text is changed in the text box. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna leave that button um, alone, and we're gonna create a new uh, variable reference. So we're gonna do var, and then for me, it was txt underscore filter. And then we are gonna do a add, underscore text changed and we're going to do it open uh, parentheses open curly bracket and in vs code it should automatically close those off and then in here all we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and copy paste the code from the button filter button and we can actually just remove this add click just so we don't we don't really need it because we don't have a button anymore and that should actually be it. So if we save this and we go ahead and we launch this now. And now we go into our filter. We do PR. So as you can see, everything is editing as we type. So it's quite uh, easy to do. You can actually do a whole bunch of things with the text change. Um, of course, probably filtering is probably the most common. Uh, but you could really put any type of function in here um, with the text changed you could trigger other windows to open or anything really um, or with the text change you can also maybe add some if statements that if the text is equal to something specific do a certain action there's quite a lot of things that you could do with this um, event handler of text changed but this is how you use it to apply kind of like a live filter view on your data grid. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any um, ideas or any questions on how to do certain things like Robin did, uh, leave a comment down below and I will try to get to it as fast as possible if I can figure it out, that is. Um, and if I can't figure it out or if it's not possible, I usually let you guys know by the comments. Um, but feel free to comment down below, like the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.